What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Enigmatica 2 Expert. Oh, yeah, guys. So, uh, I'm in the process right now of trying to make some more Wyvern cores. Yeah, we want to make some more of the Awakened cores, and we need uh, four of these per. I was going to make two more of these guys. Um, so, I have this recipe queued up, and we are doing stuff. Problem is, as usual, <laughs> we're trying to make this depleted uranium nuclear fuel. Now we have this set up to auto craft. It's going through the reactor downstairs. Uh, the depleted fuel is going to turn into the tiny piles of plutonium. Remember, we can recover that once it goes through our nuclear craft reactor down here. Um, but yeah, this thing isn't fast. It works. I can time in a bottle it and make it faster, but it is still pretty slow. I think what we're going to do, I think today we're going to look at using the the UU matter we've been collecting um, and try and make plutonium out of that so we can collect a whole lot of that. Yeah, it's been a long time since I have last done this process. I'm going to cancel our current craft here. Uh, that way the plutonium that we have should end up back in the system, I think. So we have two of them in here. Now, you don't want this in your inventory without the hazmat suit on because it'll, it'll poison you. <laughs> You'll get radiation sickness. Um, so, yeah, we have collected quite a lot of UU matter since we first set this thing up. It's just been kind of running in the background ever since. And since we got that reactor set up in the end, it's pretty much been going full blast. Yeah. So we have about 550 buckets worth of UU matter, which is quite a lot. Now, I rattled off a whole bunch of numbers as far as UU matter costs go in this mod pack, uh, that's the numbers that were listed in the configuration file. But it's been brought to my attention that for whatever reason, the actual in-game values are like a hundred less. So if something costs five thousand in uh, the configuration file. It only costs five, like five millibuckets. I think I haven't actually tested this out but i've heard it's a lot cheaper than what it says in the configuration file so i'm very interested in checking this out and if that's true we didn't have to set up the uh <laughs> the skeleton farm over here like we did in order to click uh skulls but you know we did end up getting ourselves a beheading x weapon beheading 10 so every single thing that we behead with this or we attack with this and kill it will drop a skull so i mean i don't think it's a problem but I, again, I do want to give this thing the awakened sword blade, but we need seven more of these things and we can't even make two more of these things right now because of the plutonium cost. Um, so anyway, in order for us to, I guess, do anything with the UU matter, we have to make ourselves a industrial pattern thingy, a pattern storage. And then this in itself is quite the thing to do, if I remember. <laughs> it's been a while, but I remember it being fun. Yeah, we need silicon dioxide. I think you have to do that through a thermal centrifuge. Yeah, so you need clay dust, but through here, it looks like we have a pressurizer that can do that easier. So we might do a pressurizer. Okay, so yeah, we need to make these crystal memories. Now you can store um, everything that you scan, which is another thing we have to do. So let's... Let's save this one. Then we need to make ourselves a scanner. Yeah, we need one of these things. So we scan an item in the scanner and then we can put it onto the crystal memory. Or I think you can store it directly in the pattern storage. I don't think you actually need to save them to crystal memories, but you can do that and then like have your own copy if you wanna, I don't know, make another pattern storage and have your items being output somewhere. But uh anyway. The other thing that's difficult about this pattern storage is these mining lasers, if I remember correctly. Actually, this doesn't look that bad in this mod pack. Okay, so that's not a big deal. Advanced machine casing, we have that on auto craft. Reinforced stone, grout, polished stone, clay dust, pretty easy. Uh, so yeah, I think we should be able to get going here. Now, I don't believe, I don't believe we have a pressurizer from nuclear craft, and we are going to make one of these if we don't have one. I'm... I don't remember ever making one of those. Let's take a look. Pressure. We don't have one uh, hooked up anyway. Pressurizer. Hey, it looks like we do have one on auto craft, so we must have made one somewhere for something, for some other auto thing, but not for actual 
crafting with with applied energistics. Okay, so we have a pressurizer. That's pretty simple. And then we're going to want the nuclear craft speed upgrades and stuff. So energy upgrade, speed upgrade. Let's make, I don't know, how about 12 more of each one? Then we'll put 16 in. Like so. That should be pretty good. All right, so we got 16 of those, 16 of those. Um, and yeah, and then it said that we just have to put clay dust. Four clay dust equals a silicon dioxide. So let's just make like a stack of clay dust. Can we make this? We can. Perfect. How about 100? Because that's simpler to click. So we'll put like a stack in there. We'll make the silicon dioxide that we need. I don't know if we're going to need a whole lot of this in the future. So this will just be something that we hook up right now. That is water. <laughs> All right. We'll place that down. These guys go in here. Clay dust in there. Cool. And there we go. There's 16 silicon dioxide. All right. Well, that was pretty simple to do. So we have those guys. And then we need to make at least two of these crystal memories. So we need uh, obsidian dust. This stuff, the pulverized obsidian, just make it a little bit extra. No big deal. One crystal memory, two crystal memory. And that goes into uh, our patterned storage. But we do have to cook them. We have to smelt them. So let's put them through our furnace. There we go. Awesome. All right. So we have those guys done. They don't click into here because I think they have NBT data or something. I'm not sure. Uh, crystal memory. The other one's right here. All right. So we need reinforced stone. We don't, we do have that on auto craft. I was like, we don't have that. And then I just saw it the last second. All right. So we have those guys. Uh, the other thing is advanced machine. Does this need advanced machine? All right. So let's make two advanced machine, advanced machine casings, kick those auto crafts off. That's not that big of a deal. Uh, and then beyond that, we need two of these mining lasers and an advanced control circuit. Actually, do these need advanced control circuits too? Yes. So we need six advanced control. Is it six? Maybe it was only three. Okay. So we'll make three of those guys. Then the mining laser, we need eight advanced alloy. How about 10 of them? Just go a little bit overboard. So we have them for later. Uh, and then I guess energy crystal. Yeah, we have those on auto craft as well. We got a lot of this stuff on auto craft, which is fantastic. It makes the crafting go by that much easier. So we'll just do one and two. Cool. So we have those guys and this, we are missing our other crystal memory. And there we go. Pattern storage. Does that complete a quest for us? I feel like that should What's our industrial craft quests looking like? Are there industrial craft? There are. Uh, okay. So the pattern storage. Oh, I didn't put the mining laser in my inventory. I think we just messed up. I think we needed that unlock to do this one. So scanner, replicator, and then iridium. Okay. Well, you know what? I went a little too fast. Let me go ahead and make another one of these mining lasers to complete this. And then we will go down the line and make the rest of these machines. All right, guys, so we got ourselves a pattern storage, the scanner, and the replicator. And I also took the liberty of completing pretty much all of these other IC2 quests. Thermal centrifuge is the last one we have left. And since we had to make another mining laser, we get to use that thing again. So there we go. Uh, induction furnace was another one that I just made. Like, we made so many things, like an MFE, which got used in the MFCU or MFSU, I guess. This thing. Uh, we had to make a LE something, the, the low power, low voltage things, which, which we're never using because we have the mechanism universal cable. But yeah, we don't need any of those power storage things. But anyway, thermal centrifuge, that's all done. So last thing we need to do here is click this, and then we can click this button, which should clean all of those. So now we have a whole bunch of loot chests, and I guess... Exactly enough for my inventory. Okay, so we get a Horn of the Wild, Overclocker Upgrades. That's kind of cool, 12 of those. Uh, Eye of Ender, uh, Silky Jewel, Sunday Roast, Block of Ironwood, a Crafter Tier 3. That's not bad. Actually, I guess we get two of them. Uh, we get ourselves General South Chicken, uh, Obsidian Pressure Plate. Are we going to get anything that we haven't seen before? Sleep Charm, we already have that. We got a precision sawmill. That's not bad, I guess. We don't need it, but that's kind of cool. 
I don't think we've gotten one of those before. Advanced power cell that holds 40 million RF. That's not bad either, but yeah, don't really need it. Tape measure. <laughs> Still going here. White stained glass, a full stack of that. Iron candles. We get a transformer upgrade. Uh, this increases the tier of the machine. So like a low voltage only accepts 32 EU per tick can now accept 128 with that in there. But the universal cable takes care of all of that for us. So we don't really need those, I guess. Um, grass blocks. We get pineapple ham. Origin terrarium. Have we got one of those before? Maybe we have. I'm not really sure. Uh, this guy is a mint chocolate chip ice cream. Mm, that sounds good. And our last one is a slime sling. Okay, lots of stuff clogging up the inventory here. Oh, they gave us two of these terrariums. Are these things you just placed down? What are these? So it's just a block with a flower in it. Okay, oh. All right, so we can put the Horn of the Wild away, overclockers, this stuff. We don't need any of these things. Uh, some of these are good. The Crafter Tier 3s, I'm sure we will get some use out of, I think so, eventually. And then some food that I'll put down into our fridge down below. Okay, so all the IC2 quests are now complete. We have another section completely done, which is fantastic. So we're trying to look at the pattern storage, the scanner, and the replicator. Okay, so the way this works, uh, I think we're just going to put these over here. I'll have to dig out behind this, and then we'll do this so we can run our universal cable over. Uh, we need the pattern storage in the center. Then we need a scanner on one side of it. It has to be touching this block, so whatever this thing scans, we can store in the pattern storage. And then the replicator also has to be touching a pattern storage because you select which item you want the replicator to see. Yep, and then you can uh, maybe select it here, but it has to be touching uh, pattern storage in order for it to know the items that it can do. Anyway, so these are the three basic blocks that we need in order to start using our UU Matter. So let's break out this block here, and I'll grab some more universal cable. I'm pretty sure we have more universal cable. We want the ultimate, ultimate universal cable. There we go. Okay. So yeah, pattern storage doesn't take any power. It just holds patterns. All right, we'll close that all back up. Awesome. So scanning result, or the scanner, uh, takes a little bit of time to scan the item. Yeah, it takes a bit of time. Uh, we want to scan plutonium. So let's swap over to our hazmat suit. Um, we'll grab some plutonium, and we will put it inside the scanner. And 1%, 2%. Can we speed this up with time in a bottle? Yes, we can. Let's click it again. There we go. Maximum speed. Done. So that is going to cost 23.69 millibuckets of UU matter. Save that. So now that's over here in our pattern storage, tiny pile of plutonium. And then our replicator here. Uh, we can turn this thing on and make it go faster and stuff like that. But we need the UU matter from here over here. So how do we do that? Uh, I guess we can grab ourselves another tank and just kind of swap them. Um, let's do this. We'll just make a new portable tank. This holds how many? 32 buckets. We'll have to upgrade that. I'll do that later. We have 500 buckets over here already stored. Yeah, we'll want this thing <laughs> holding maximum here pretty soon. So let's do, yeah, we'll just put it up like this. We will do this and this. I will put some quartz back behind here so that looks fine. And then we will grab um, the ender fluid conduit because we need to pipe that UU matter in here. So this is going to be set to insert. This is going to be set to extract, always active. So now we have the UU matter, we have power, we just need to select the pattern, and then we can tell it to repeat run, which means it will uh, keep doing this over and over. If you do single run, it only makes one item. So if we look here, we can see it's slowly draining some of that UU matter. Yeah, that's not bad, really. Uh, and I think these you can overclock. I'm not sure. It's been a minute since I've last done this. Oh, yeah. So if I put like 10 of those in there, 
What about if I put all... Oop, that's too much. Too much. See the little power thing here wiggling around? So 13 looks like a good amount that we can do. And there we go. There's a full stack of those. Double check. I have hazmat. There we go. Awesome. So now we can do the wyvern. If I wanted to make seven more of those, we have the tiny piles of plutonium available. We don't have to wait on that. So if I tell it to start that up, yep, most of that's already done. So now we're just doing a little bit of crafting here. And whatever it's got to do to finish this up, it's doing that. I think that's in one of the modular machines. Cool. So that's so much faster now that we're able to have plutonium. Uh, now, I think you can also do the larger plutoniums. It might be might be better for us to take one of these and scan that as well so we can do either or. And then again, we will speed that thing up and make that go just a, just a tiny bit faster. There we go. So that costs 213. It should be nine times whatever the other price was. It's not like one's cheaper than the other for no specific reason. So we'll stop this. We'll swap the pattern to the regular plutoniums and then we will do a repeat run on this guy. Yeah, so that's pretty cool. So now we're getting nine at a time. That'll hold a lot more than what we we're doing here with the tiny ones. Okay, so plutonium is pretty much taken care of. I think you can set up a a compacting drawer maybe well i'm not sure if i want to set up a compacting drawer actually for this i was thinking that we could just dump these into the system and do that and then it could use either one but i kind of feel like we might want to leave this in the block or the big form in the system i don't know we'll figure this out as we go because this might be something we just craft up a whole bunch right away and then we just use them and then we won't ever run out I don't know if we're going to want a bunch more replicators, one for each different item. These are things that we still got to figure out going forward. Um, but anyway, so now that we have that, I can go ahead and take those wyvern cores that we just made. Uh, and then I wanted to make some more of these awakened cores. We're just going to make two more. So I need 10 awakened draconium. So let's make 10 of those, which just uses our awakened essence, which we've been collecting. Cool. So let's go see about doing this. So it's four of these, five of these. Uh, I did change up the power below. So each one of these things has its own, uh, you can't see it, but it has its own uh, flux network thingy on there. And I get, was it in stars? Yeah, another stars. So we have a bunch of those and we have even more collecting <laughs> because of the essence, which is great. So let's put that in here. We'll start that up. Yeah, it doesn't charge much faster and it might be the tier of the fusion crafting injectors we might need to go to the draconic ones before they can charge any faster than this i'm not entirely sure yeah or it might just be a limitation of our flux network flux plug since we're pulling a whole bunch of power over here yeah i i don't know what's making this go slow and what we can do to speed this up i thought that putting uh its own flux point on each one of those would be enough but apparently not uh, all right, so that's one more of these things. Whoops, let me grab these. So one, two, three, four, and then five of these. And then we click start. And then we get the really annoying sound while it charges up because the charging process isn't any faster. But uh, hopefully that'll charge up fast enough to take advantage of the, <laughs> the boops that we put on to the crafting core. Oh no, it just ran out. Oh, that sucks. How are we doing here? All right, so I just boop that a couple times and here we go. Cool. So now we have more awakened cores. So what I wanted to do with these, first of all, was upgrade our sword, our normal sword, like so. So yeah, that gives us an attack of 35 and we are currently using, what are we using for the blade? I can't see here. If I go to this tab and put my sword here, does it show me? I'm actually not entirely sure what we're using for the blade. I think, yeah, I'm not sure. Anyway, so we're going <laughs> to upgrade this regardless. So there's two awakened cores plus this. So we go from an attack of 21.84 to an attack of nearly 40. That is pretty good, I'd say. Uh, the durability goes way up, but we don't care about durability. This thing is unbreaking. Uh, brown magic, you're weird. Press the set portal key default end 
to set a virtual portal on the block you are pointing at. By default, press Y to teleport there if there is enough space. Okay, so that's like another way of like warping around if you wanted to do that. Uh, the Hydra grovels before me. Damage pierces armor. Mobs only. Okay, so that's pretty cool. I like it. All right, so let's do this. And we don't have any modifiers available. So our sword now does a significant amount of damage. We should be able to go pretty much one shot anything <laughs> that we can attack. Let's go see if we can. Well, I mean, aside from boss mobs, right? But we should be able to pretty much one shot any monster around. Creeper. Oop, you're dead. Anybody else? Do we got like a zombie hair boss skeleton with a bunch of armor? That's really good. Um, and I think. I'm not 100 percent sure, but I think that damage transfers over. Like if I have that in my hand and I'm using the bow at the same time. I think my damage from the sword transfers over. So pretty much anything that we attack, hmm, maybe not. I was gonna say pretty much anything we attack, we should one shot like this, but maybe it's only the looting effect that gets transferred. I'm not sure. But anyway, that's a lot better. So now we need to make eight more of those for our cleaver. All right, guys. So if we go in here and we try to make 32 more of these wyvern cores, because we're gonna need those, we are starting to run out of some pretty important things here. Shulker shells. We have 20. We're missing 12. So if I go farm up 12, we'll be fine for this crap. But when we need more of these in the future, which we are going to need, then we're going to have an issue. So I think it's time for us to look at farming shulkers. Blaze is also another thing. This is less important. Those are pretty easy to deal with in the nether. And then, of course, we have um, yeah, the ruby, the peridot and the blue congealed slime stuff to deal with. But we already know how we're going to deal with this. And I have a good idea how we're going to deal with those. But yeah, let's go take care of the shulker problem. So shulkers, um, we have shulkers in a soul vial. So we could just make ourselves a powered spawner. That would be one way of going about doing this. I don't think that's how I want to do this, though. I think what we're going to do is we are going to look at... Draconic evolution. Yep. So if we come into Dracon, or I'm sorry, if we come into this enchanter over here from Ender.io and we go back to this page, we can look at Reaper. Reaper will allow us to get mob souls by killing monsters. And with those mob souls, we can make any spawner into that type of monster. And Draconic evolution allows you to upgrade the spawner so you can spawn a large amount of monsters really, really, really quickly. Yeah, I think this is what we're going to want to do. So Reaper 5 it costs uh, 60 Draconium blocks. Draconium. Can we make 60 of these? I forget if there's like something. Nah, that's just Draconium. Easy. So we'll just go ahead and cook up all of that stuff. We got plenty of Draconium dust plus plenty of Draconium ore after that. So that's not even a worry. And then we needed some uh, lapis. Let's grab some of that. Uh, draconium. And then we also needed a book and quill, I think. Book and quill. All right, we'll make one of those. Cool. So book and quill, draconium, lapis, 45 levels. I think we can do that. That's not really a big problem. So there's 42, 44, and 45. All right. So now we should be able to make Reaper 5. Sweet. Then we'll come over here to our type setting table and we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and copy this so we don't have to go through that nonsense again so we need 40 levels to do that 40 try to be a little frugal with the xp for no particular reason uh so we'll do that so now we have our reaper five plate so we can place that in here and then we need uh ink just grab two ink Place that onto the ink thingy. Yep, and then we can boop this a couple of times with our time in a bottle to make that go faster. Uh, so there's our Reaper 5, and then we'll get our other Reaper 5 here. And then this thing, if we ever want to make more Reaper 5s, we just repair this guy right like so. Cool, so now we can always make more Reaper 5s, right? So we need to put that onto our sword. Um, actually... Is it possible to enchant our sword with Reaper 5 now that I'm thinking about it since this is Tinkers? 
Uh, yeah, that's something that's not going to work. Can we put it on here? No. Hmm. So what do we do with Reaper 5? We need to put that on some kind of weapon, and we can use our bow to attack. Do we have... We have these, the Ender Swords. I wonder, can you put Reaper 5 on this? The amount of damage this does, does it say on here? Seven hearts? It's not that much, but really we're only looking for getting Reaper. Uh, where did my Reaper book go? There it is. Yeah, you can put Reaper on this. Then we can also put Sharpness on this to make it a little bit more damaging. So, yeah, unfortunately, we can't put it onto this sword. Um, I guess we could look at making the Draconic Sword or the Wyvern. Can we make the Wyvern one? I can't remember if that's a thing that we can do. Sword of the Wyvern. So, that requires a Supremium Sword, Wyvern Core, this... And this has an attack damage of 1.5. Wait, what? Why is the attack damage so low on this? Is it because you have to upgrade this in order to get more attack? I'm not entirely sure. Um, so if we take a look at the uses for this sword, yeah, we can... It doesn't show the upgrades, does it? Maybe it doesn't want you to do any upgrading with that. I'm not sure. The Draconic Sword says attack of 3.5. We look at this. Doesn't show the upgrades either. Um, Draconic, upgrade this stuff. Attack, damage, level wyvern. I'm not sure why it wasn't showing that we could do this with the uh, sword before, but we absolutely can do it. Now, I'm not sure if it's worth doing this right now, because we're probably just going to make uh, the Draconic Staff of Power later on. Um, and that's going to cost a little bit. So tell you what, for now, for what we're doing, let's just use this Ender. We'll speed things up a bit here. We'll just use the Ender Sword. It won't do that much damage, but our bow already does quite a bit of damage by itself. So I think we'll be okay. So we'll put Reaper 5 on here. Again, we can always make Reaper going forward. So it's not that big of an issue. Uh, I might get Sharpness on there. Do we have a Sharpness book? Sharpness 3, Sharpness 5. Here we go. So yeah, we can get some more of this. So... I'll go ahead and get this all set up and we'll go to the end. All right, guys. So our sword now has mending on there and sharpness five with the reaper five on there. So we should have a pretty good chance of getting mob souls when we kill shulkers. I hear, oh, there's one. I was like, I hear one, but I don't see it. Okay. So we got a shulker shell off that one. Oh man. Lots of these guys. Got to get my magnet turned back on. I had that thing turned off. All right, that guy. So did we get a mob soul yet? Hopefully we've gotten something. Did I just see something all the way down here? No, that was a ladder that I saw. Oh man, these guys, they want to play, don't they? Uh, so we have gotten six shulker, shulker shells, but no, no shulker sh soul yet. I think it's only like a 5% increase in chance uh, with the Reaper 5. I'm not exactly sure how much it gives you um, for getting the drop. But yeah, we definitely should be able to get Reaper, or I'm sorry, the uh, the Mob Soul with the bow holding the sword. All right, so I'm just going to keep going around. Hopefully we'll get the drop here pretty soon. All right, guys, that took a little bit longer than I thought it was going to take. Um, yeah, you can kind of see how much durability has gone on our bow now. We did collect a decent amount of stuff here. This is the second, yeah, I think this is the second one that we came to. So we got two elytras, um, there are shulker, sh uh, soul, I was going to say shell. We did end up collecting 28 of the shulker shells, which is pretty cool. And a bunch of random stuff here. Got some more soul vials with shulkers in it, empty soul vials and, just other random stuff that you get from this, the the pearls and whatnot and so on. Uh, so I think we're pretty much done here. Yep. Uh, I do want to collect some more of these Shulker Souls, but we will do that when we can spawn them in. Yeah. It might have been a better idea just to make the Powered Spawner with the Shulker in it and then, like, farm those for the soul. But either way, uh, we got this done. So now it's to, now it's time to go back to the base. All right, guys. Well, it looks like we've ran out of time for today. I was actually trying to walk this door. I 
ran right into the walls like what the heck that looks super weird anyway uh yeah we've run out of time for today so we're gonna wait to use this shulker soul and set up the spawner for next time yeah so we want to do that for this we might set up one for blaze so we can collect a lot of the uh blaze rods and stuff since that's something else that we need to do and we needed to automate the uh the paradise and the ruby stuff so yeah that'll be stuff for next time but anyway that's it for today thank you guys for watching remember to leave a like on the episode if you liked it and we'll see you next time thanks for watching guys bye bye